What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part 9 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Wolfric Immortal Empires campaign. So as we saw last time, a pretty darn eventful episode as we destroyed the foolish uh, Kislevites of, uh, the, uh, of the Great Orthodoxy and got to play around with the trolls at last for Throg. Trolls for the Troll King have arrived at last. In addition to that, we've made our way southward and gotten the Goromadni tribe under our boot heel and have taken Kuhan here with Sir Thak. We're certainly starting to spread out and move in multiple directions as well. And we should. Uh, hopefully we can maintain Kuhan for at least four turns to get the secrets of grain and grape and then maybe use Sirtha to sort of raid, raise, etc, etc. Gotta get those gods favors up and running as fast as we can. Especially Crow and Serpent as we want the reductions and we want the additional armor growth and casualty replenishment rate both of those are uh, are pretty great i mean honestly they're all pretty great but you know uh we gotta get the ones that allow us to get more armies up and running as fast as possible anyway in terms of what we got to do this episode we are right beside grimgore so the first thing we got to do is to try to uh, dig him out of uzkalak and keep the disciples of hashut alive if nothing else to get either a military alliance or a vassalage if we can make it happen though with the at 83, I don't know how likely it is, but I guess we'll see. It depends on how much the Great Skull Lakes will be worth to, t worth to these guys. And we shall see. Anyway, I guess we will ask them to join war against Grimgore like this, and... Ooh, decent amount of cash for it. Alright, now the good thing about that is I wanted to get another mage on the field. Actually, it's second other mage on the field here. Uh, Eagle's Blessing, with the additional Spirit Leech and the dreaded immunity to Psychology Removal Contact. Both of these mages will go into this army, as they will need magics to support their relatively weak main line. Between Soul Blight and Glittering Robe, these guys should be a little bit stronger and hopefully able to hold, though we shall see. Alright, that looks good. Wolfric, can you reach Grimgore? Yes, but can you reach him once he presumably runs, is the real question. He's not going to fight us and the Garrison. Of Uzkalak. And ooh, we might not be able to. Ah, ah, or. Ooh, just barely. Alright, fantastic. So, Wolfric's gonna get his duel after all. Now, we will want to reinforce, so we'll move Sith Warrior Breaker right here. And Stigazling as well. And, well, I guess all of you guys. You know what? You can go into March Dance right here. I assume there's no other armies around. I don't think so. Might as well have them all leech. And go here. And Wolfric. You're ready to move, buddy. And I guess we can't raid these guys because they're our, uh, they're <laughs> friendly, at least for now. All right, but the duel is what we're here for, and the duel will be had. Close victory, medium casualties, but uh, I don't see this being too much of a problem. Of course, the uh, uh, the Crimson Killers are going to be an issue with the them being tier 5 and all, um, but I think we'll riddle them with javelins just like we do everything else. Go. Alrighty, here we go. Certainly a worthy foe for Wilfric and Grimgore, and I'm excited to see the two face off. Although, of course, uh, Grimgore will have to work his way through quite a lot of mammoth flesh to uh, make his way up to Wilfric. I gotta like how he's sitting up on the throne with his uh, sword on his lap, just sort of waiting for somebody to come and... Uh, Give him a proper challenge. Plus, once again, it's a great view of the battlefield from up here, isn't it? Uh, gotta love it. Anyway, anyway, we're gonna make our way forward as we usually do. We have a Sea Fang and a Golden Hounds of Gehenna to use on the enemy army. And I'm sure it'll rip its way through many an Orc boy before it's done. Uh, the, uh, well... The regular orc boys aren't going to be too concerning anyway, but anyway. Uh, there we go, there's that sea fang activation as well. I want to see if we can uh, bounce it off of this impassable terrain as well, which would be nice to double up on the damage. 
And let's see. Oh, it does bounce. Doesn't quite go the direction I was expecting. I was expecting it to go uh, this way. It looks like it almost went straight back to where it came from. It's actually a very nice combination when you use a vortex because the AI generally stops. Obviously, it doesn't want to run into the vortex, and that allows you to hit them with a uh, with a wind ability, like Seafang. Anyway, it looks like Wolfric gets a little bit surrounded as some squig hoppers charge him. Um, but they immediately get hit by the Beasts of Tashinar and his uh, personal Weirkin, as well as the Maws of Savagery. Well, I'm still of the opinion that we'll probably uh, trade those to Throggy in a little bit. And by the looks of it, the Squig Hoppers are out, the uh, boys are breaking themselves upon the Mammoth as the rest of uh, uh, as the rest of the enemy army and chooses to close the distance. We got our reinforcements arriving on the field, not that we really need them. The enemy boar boys try to charge our lines, but simply get absolutely ripped apart by those Marauder Hunters with Javins. It may be a tier 2 unit, but they're doing 89, they have 89 bloody missile strength, and this is, this isn't an army that buffs these guys they just have 89 missile strength uh, after all their veterancy I'm actually really excited to see what kind of heights we can push them to with our Marauder Hunter army there we go boys charging to the Icehorn Marauders who uh, still look pretty darn fantastic I love their uh, sort of blue color scheme Manny the Mammoth wades on into the fight as Wolfric has sighted Grimgore and heads directly towards him, stopping him in his tracks with Hunter of Champions and sending all the other boys flying on his way to fight the biggest and the greenest. Speaking of Grimgore, he's lost about 10% of his HP with the first couple hits and has activated both the Bloodforged Armor and Gitznik. Sword of Torgald is activated on Wolfric, giving him, well, actually only 66 melee defense, so he doesn't hit quite as hard as Grimgore does, um, but uh, because of Hunter of Champions, Grimgore, while still having a massive amount of melee attack, has basically no melee defense to speak of at zero. So pretty much every hit from Wolfric, or rather, Wolfric's Mammoth will connect, and all the while do additional splash damage to the boys around Grimgore. Anyway, that's going to be a heck of a long contest, or at least it should be, but Grimgore decides, you know what, no, I don't like fighting this mammoth, and I'm going to head towards something a little bit more manageable, like these Marauder Champions, and start whacking away at them. He'll eat at least a few javelins to the forehead, while the mammoth closes the distance once more, and that's gotta be a scary sight. Where were you trying to go, Grimgore? I get that you lost your half of your HP, but... <laughs> It ain't going well, and neither is it for the rest of his army, as most of the enemy army has already collapsed. Our uh, Marauder horses have charged the enemy back line, and the Gobos are obviously overrun. The Beasts of Tashinar, working together with our Skinwolf Werken, uh, were uh, chasing down enemy heroes, but now we're simply going to focus the Giant River Troll Hag with our Javelins, while the Werken moves through all of our Marauders and heads directly for the enemy Black Orc Big Boss, together with the Moss of savagery. Grimgore in the meantime is attempting to escape with about 10% HP while Wolfric has activated his healing potion, not that he needed it by the looks of it, and has almost recovered to full HP. Well, let's hope that Archaon can give you more of a contest. And the thing is, we haven't actually built Wolfric out to be a fighter yet. He, he has, what, one point, I think, so far in his uh, fighty tree? Everything else is buffing his army. Anyway, Hunter of Champions, a little bit of an insult to Grimgore, and then we bring him down at last. With Grimgore broken, the rest of his army shatters, and the battle, just like that, is ours. Frankly, his army was actually fairly weak, but it was the Grimgore duel that we wanted out of this. And, I guess the, uh, uh, the Immortals, huh? Wait, is, there, is it a banner that makes the Immortals unbreakable? I swear the Immortals had an unbreakable trait, didn't they? Oh, no, wait, no, 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 wait. There was a banner... A banner that made them not lose HP as long... Or not lose entities or something as long as they didn't lose leadership. Yeah, yeah, yeah not unbreakable. And I was thinking of a different thing. But anyway, uh, they got overrun similar to everybody else. Though I do expect we'll see them again, I'm not so sure that we'll see them again with uh, Wolfric, as we don't want to stay here. Trip to Lustria is going to take a while. 
Which is making me wonder, do we go up to Tamarkan and Kolek? If we could just grab Archeon, I'd let the other two go just by virtue of, you know, not having enough time. Hmm. I'll think about it. Anyway. All right, there we go. Seeing Grimgore brought low, probably pretty demoralizing for the Greenskin Hordes. His army destroyed, and he'll give us nearly 10,000 gold for our trouble. Uh, fight as Norskins and make money. Makes sense. All righty, and defeated Grimgore gives us armor plus five for all characters faction-wide, which is quite nice, especially as Wilfric is relatively lightly armored when on the Mammoth, as well as that armor-piercing weapon damage plus 50. Uh, hey, another Brass Cleaver and another Tormentor Sword. Oh my. Uh, I'm very happy with that. Don't really care about the Obsidian Trinket, but uh, happy about the rest. And the Gambler's Armor. Huh. Go figure. Uh, wait, let me just see this for a second. Alright, hold on to the Tormentor Sword for now. We'll probably give that to somebody else. I wanted to see something. Now, somebody either... Okay, we have enemy leadership minus five for enemy armies in region. If we take the Ancillary... That is called, not the Berserker, Mammoth Tamer. Enemy leadership minus one enemy armies in region. We could give one of these to every hero under Wolfric, which will reduce the leadership of everybody who's fighting him further. And I wonder if there are any other way to uh, stack these. Olaf Hilmerson has one. Who the heck is Olaf Hilmerson? I don't know. Oh, that was the Gormodny tribe leader. All right, uh, let's take his mammoth tame as well. As well, he doesn't need it. Uh, Olaf Himmerkin, that's fine. That's a different Olaf. Olaf and Olaf, not to be confused. Uh, yeah, we'll keep this. We probably don't have room to put it on uh, Wolfric, and we may do the same thing with Throg if we have additional ones. Now, we're not going to raid because we got to keep these guys at least somewhat friendly. And we're not going to do the military alliance as yet because we'd rather trade them some territories. Uh, in fact, try to move here. I'm wondering whether we could try to take both territories at once. You can't move any further. You, however, can. And you cannot. It would be nice. You can reach it. I guess the question will be if Wilfred goes like right here. Would he be able to then jump to Fort Dorjnever? Probably not. By the looks of it, no. But nah, we'll give it a shot. Anyway, uh, is he too damaged to do the monster hunt? Yeah, I think he is, especially since we won't be able to heal at the end turn. So we'll give, we'll, we'll wait. It's fine. Sirtha, you... You could either raid Leoness, and you could do so this turn, but I don't think you'd be able to do so in raiding camp, or we could take Long Gi. It will cost us colonization cost, but I think what we can do is instead of investing in Long Gi, for obvious reasons, we can use it as bait, and oh, there you are. There you are, Lewin. You shouldn't have gone up there, man. Uh, yeah, we can use this as bait, and... We can use this to get Marauders to Builders, which gives us Casualty Replenishment here, which, let's face it, Sirtha does need right now. Until he gets a Bale Fiend, or until we get some kind of other upgrades for Casualty Replenishment rate, we need that. Alright, who's up next? Throggy. I would like you to go to Zavastra, or as close to it as you can. And then raid it a little bit. Wait, can you? If you go into Raiding Camp Stance, yes you can. Alright. And go into Zavastra, raid these guys a little bit, make us a little bit more cash, and then uh, take this and then try to give it to these guys for potential vassalization. You, Morkaka, and well, all of you, I guess, are moving southward. Like so. Olaf, you. I'll try to get away from this plague, so yeah, I keep moving southward. And then Hamathane Frost as well. All three or four of you. At least until we're ready to split uh, Morkaka's army off on her own, which will be soon as we're building more trolls and stuff for Thragi to use. We could also... Uh, we could also use Manticores instead of Ice Dragons until we get more Ice Dragons. I don't know how many we're going to have in, in his army, but at least two more in addition to the Cold Voider. So we could use them to take their place and use the regular trolls to take the place of the Ice Trolls until we have more Ice Trolls. It all works out. Of course, we need more room for Ice Trolls and other things, but uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, work, we'll work on it. I also want to see a thing or two. First of all... 
The, okay, so we have, ooh, we have Bone Crusher on these Fimir, minus five melee defense. We have Sundered Armor on these Fimir. Hmm, which one's more tanky? It looks like it's the Great Weapon Fimir that are more tanky by virtue of having a little bit more melee defense. I'm just wondering how many Fimir we should have in Throg's army. The thing is, he has that special ability that he can give Fimir, which could be quite useful for us as we could potentially stack a bunch of Fimir stuff together or a debuffs. As long as nobody else of his would have Bone Crusher, and I'm not sure that anything does. Let me just see. The... Ice Trolls of Frostbite. I suppose we could get a giant or two in his army just for the bolstered defense. He is kind of blobby. We could put one giant in there for Northern Roar and the defense buff, as well as perhaps a, a Mammoth with War Shrine for, as I said, the Giver of Ruinous Glory. Or Giver of Glory. I prefer Ruinous Glory, but anyway. Uh... <laughs> Uh, yeah, and if we can manage, like, a Nurgle Shrine or something in there, it'd be nice, too. Anything that would ha help the sort of troll Death Star that we're looking to make. Hmm, just looking at anything else with auras or contact effects. Uh, but yeah, we could do two Fimir. Ignoring the Bone Crusher ones, then, wait, where are you? Ignoring the Great Weapon Bone Crusher ones, then we could do maybe two regular Fimir Warriors, one to Armor Sunder, and then one Armor Sunder to o be overwritten by Throg's uh, Fimir Linebreaker thing. Which would be quite effective, I'd wager. Yes. Alrighty. Uh, that's the plan, anyway. The rest of this is good. We have a little bit more money to spend, but I'm not sure that we have anything else that we can build here. We're not gonna bother... Actually, 563 is not so bad. But is there any point if we're just using this as bait? Make us a little bit of cash. Oh, if we build up the first level of ports, depending on where enemies are coming in, we might get a little bit of extra growth. Hmm... I don't know, it's 500 gold. It's just, just do it, who cares. Erengrad, we can ignore you for now, and Kislev, we... Well, I don't even know why I'm bothering to upgrade you, to be perfectly honest, but we'll see. As soon as we declare war on these guys, most likely Katrin will attempt to retake Kislev. Maybe if we could reach it with you, we might be able to defend it with Olaf. Hmm. It doesn't have much in the way of a garrison, but she'd need a pretty solid stack to deal with us. Anyway, the rest of this looks good to me, so skip, skip, and then the turn. And Wolfric just needs like a turn or two free, so that, ooh, Tarina Katrin, you've moved into Zavastra. Not the best of ideas. Hmm. Now, I don't remember who has Serena Ketron's current trait. Grimgor, you want peace, buddy. You want peace. Isn't that cute? Well, you're not willing to be our vessel, and if you're not willing to be our vessel, you're gonna be. You're gonna have to be willing to die. Uh, no peace. Only war. We're also gonna have to go up and deal with Buck Buck the Lethal and probably Archie. Tamarkan might also be a nice duel for, uh, for Mr. Wolfric. I know this is all delaying his uh, his trip around the world, but at the same time, finding the best duels is kind of what he's supposed to do. Ah, oh, damn, Orkaka got a plague. Well, and that's going to be an issue with uh, just sort of uh, living with these guys nearby. But we're probably not going to wipe him out. I'd rather not leave the Empire just a pile of ruins. The problem with that aspect of it is that uh, somebody will resettle those ruins. So we need somebody to live here. Anyway, uh, you received Plague of Brutal Business. Might actually be helpful to enemies more than us, but anyway. Hmm. Depending... All of our units hit really hard, and this would help basic units quite a bit. Ooh! A moment. Wait, is this a river crossing? Wait, and we could kill Dimitri Gospodar here, because he's stuck, and then move back towards Zavastra. Uh, okay, wait. Wolfric, you don't have Serena Catron's defeat trait, right? You have Hyde Striker, Castelton, Season Campaign, Victor over Kislev, da 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 Slayer Engineer, no you don't. Uh, did we give it to Slith Wallbreaker? No, somebody has it, but I damn me if I know who. I think. Hmm. Mistwalker, Faithbreaker, Red Dead. Oh, you have... Huh, you have all the uh, defeat traits. Strong arm. I think in SFO, Serena Katrin's thing is removed. Her uh, 
frostbite application. It's replaced with something else, but I don't know what it is, which is the main issue. Hmm. Well, either way, if we are able to destroy this army, you're then able to move here and probably the re- Well, you're going to have to reinforce. So we'll move you here. Morkaka, you're able to reach Zavastra, right? Just in case Throggy can't. And by the looks of it, you can. Good. Hamathane Frost, you can... You're going to have to march stance, but you can move in to reinforce. And how is the trollage here? And Okay, just, just go here. Oh, wow, our money. We need to fight more. Ever more. Uh, you're recruiting just fine. We'll probably get a couple more Feral Manticores as we go. Since two of them are going to go to Throg to take the place of the uh, Frostworms, or... Okay, no, they're not Frostworms anymore. Uh, Chaos Frost Dragons. And the other four could go to the Fimir army. So that they have something other than Fimir, at least for now. I'm not entirely sure whether we'll keep it that way, but it's uh, it's really a possibility. But anyway, uh, Wolfric, let's start with you, sir. You are going to go, I guess, right here, and we'll see. If you reinforce, will you be able to reach Fort Dorjani Vort? Yes, you will. Oh, fantastic. We'll be able to do both. Uh, we'll use... I'm a little bit concerned that there's like an army hidden here and then it'll get destroyed. So I think maybe. Okay, what's your vast lit? Minus 90. Huh? I guess we reduced the threat of Grimgore before they wanted the military alliance and the chance to vassalize was high. Now it's a lot lower than it was before, which I'm not super happy with. Well, what are you gonna do? Uh. We'll send Sleth Wallbreaker over here. Who's the least important lord out of these guys? Probably not the Drunken Brawler. Probably the Mammoth Helm guy. So Mammoth Helm, you're going to go into Great Skull Lakes. And what do we have here? Oh, we actually have a, uh, a decent amount of enemies. Mm. Okay, I think we're going to have to fight this or else we'll uh, take so much damage from the auto-resolve. But it's not like we're going to be fighting the orcs for very long, so it probably is a good idea to enjoy them while we can. Alright, so you're going to go here, and you're going to go here. Like so. And are you not reinforcing? Okay, get a little bit closer then. Oh. Huh? Is it just not showing the arrow for Slith? Yeah, it's just not showing the arrow for some reason. Alright, we're good. Uh, Great Skull Lakes. Here we go again. All right. Ooh, I like the uh, I like the single marauder chieftain up on this hill. It's uh, like you can't see his army behind him, uh, but uh, well, it very well could be there. This is all the enemy can see all the way from back here. But they know the marauders are up to something. Anyway, here we go. Probably going to be a quick and relatively easy fight for us. And, uh, well, that's unsurprising. But we want to preserve our units so that we can fight again. And hopefully auto-resolve again next turn. Man, yeah. Being silhouetted against the horizon like this uh, really does make you visible. And if you're on a mammoth, and doubly and triply so. <laughs> Alright, and we move forward with our mages as we usually do. Gonna start the day off with a good old-fashioned sea fang through the enemy lines. There we go, a little bit of damage, and we'll see if that annoys the enemy sufficiently to march towards us while we continue moving everybody else into position. If the enemy wants to wait around, all we'll do is just hit them with another sea fang, so they're damned if they do, and damned if they don't. Also, there is an impassable terrain, a little bit of impassable terrain here, which is generally good for us, because it would allow us to activate a spell as the enemy attempts to get around said impassable terrain, this little mini maw geyser thing. Alrighty, as usual, Gehenna's Golden Hounds ripping into the piles of enemy work boys and doing a little bit of area denial while the rest of our army finishes up taking their positions. Oh, the Gehenna's Golden Hounds also uh, match nicely with the sort of sunset going on here. 
Uh, righty hand, yet another Seafang moving in through the enemy lines, and as we do have a little bit of area denial from the uh, Gehennas, we can also pop a Searing Doom. The enemy does still manage to move out of that one, Zwe, as it is programmed to dodge those when uh, when not engaged. Anyway, uh, looks like the enemy will give chase to us now, sufficiently annoyed. Wolfric, however, will turn upon the Boar Boys as they are no threat to him whatsoever, and every swipe of his massive mammoth's tusks will bring a few of the boars down and there we go the rest of the enemy army moves forward and we charge out of the woods where we were hidden here come the marauder horses led by the uh, led by the skin wolf werekin and the maws of savagery in there somewhere a bloody swipe of uh, those claws sees boys torn down and damn if sometimes i forget how big the werekin are this guy is hunched over and standing taller than a marauder on a horse. And marauders are much bigger than uh, regular humans are, uh, if we compare them to, like, empire humans, because they're on those chaos steroids. What I'm saying is, it's a big boy, uh, that werewolf. Anyway, looks like the rest of our army is charging forth now. Yet another Gehenna's Golden Hounds coming down while we move on in and engage the enemy lines. Can't be letting the enemy range units fire too much, though I don't think they have a sufficient number of units to be too threatening. Our Finnir, Mirk, and Dirak are fighting together right in the center of our line. Whacking away at the enemy with staff and with big old, I don't know, I still don't know what to call this giant mace maul thing. Giant flanged mace, two-handed two flanged mace, I don't know. Well, either way, the enemy's having a bad time and dealing with it, and so is the rest of their army, as they will quickly, and I mean very quickly, shatter. I think the engagement only lasted about, uh, like, I don't know, a minute to 30 seconds, or something like that, but that's hardly surprising. This one was uh, always gonna be super easy. We'll find better ones as well. Not immediately, perhaps, because we, well, we'll probably auto-resolve the next fight, but afterwards. All right, very nice, very nice. A decent bit of cash, even without the bonuses that we'd normally get to it. And we usually would sack the place, but since we're going to trade it, we'll occupy it instead, as it gives it to us at tier 2. You don't get the gold sigil sword, however. And a talisman of preservation. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Uh, that's going to go to Wolfric as soon as he's ready to go to let that slave chain go, because for now it's giving us sacking settlements buffs and uh, kind of disinclined to lose it. Uh, Norskin War Horse, a feather foe, torque, and out of curiosity. Is this worth to you? 36, so not as much as we'd like. I think we get rid of the trophies of battle, replace it with the military structure, and see what it's worth afterwards. Don't bother collecting the income, and Wolfric, you are going to head to Fort Dorjny Vort. Which I guess we can sack, but we'll still trade, but on a more basic sort of level. Anyway, uh, go here. And this one will auto-resolve, because I don't want to deal with that again. And frankly, the garrison here is weaker anyway. So that all works out nicely for us. All right, you guys go here and follow Wolfrican to once again leech all the XP you can. Like so and like so. All right, I wonder if... Hmm. I'm just wondering how far we should go. Oh, there's also Jarna Grund. Now, these guys do like us. <laughs> Here's the issue. The issue is we have this. Occupy Jarna Grund, and the fact that this is probably one of the toughest fights, if not the toughest, just regular, generally available fight available in the game, because it's a full stack plus a hyper elite tier 5 garrison as well. I don't even know if Wolfric and his current army state would be able to win it, but I'm kind of inclined to see if he can, but anyway. Uh, you are going to sack this with an auto resolve. And yeah, that definitely hurts you. And then sack, and then stop moving, stop moving, stop moving. All right. Uh, Crown of Command. I think this is the second one we have. We could probably turn into something better. This one we're saving for Wolfric. Uh, Crowns of Command. Not that I dislike ya. Mammoth Hide Cape, melee defense plus 10, missile resistance 10%. Nothing crazy, at least not uh, Armor of Destiny level, but still solid. Absolutely solid. Occupy. There we go, a challenge indeed. Or delete this, demolish this, will hopefully give it to these guys for a, a higher amount of cash. 
And then next turn, we're gonna be just out of range of Saber Mountain, but I guess we can raid it for a turn and then deal with these guys. We will probably want to peace out with uh, the uh, Orcs, but maybe if we trade them back Saber Mountain for a solid amount of cash plus peace, that would be better. Hmm. Once again, I don't want to go too far here, but if we go for Jarnagrund, grab it, and then... Uh, but then we'd have to sort of move through their territory. Because then this way we'd be able to move up here, kill Kolek, or not kill him, but uh, dual Kolek up here, dual Tamarkan up here, dual Archaon, and then set sail, and then dual Belakor. Hmm. Might be nice to stop on by and dual Carl Fred. Okay, okay. <laughs> I gotta get ahead of myself. This says we won't have time to duel every single important lord, even if it is, uh, even if it is what we should somewhat be doing. Now, at least while Wolfric has no way to teleport around all over the map, uh, it's just not really super feasible. Plus, I kind of did that in my Aberash campaign anyway, so you know. Uh, oh, we're maxed out on plunder. We should probably build a plunder building somewhere then. Or upgrade one. Uh, Vanaheim Mountains, you can upgrade the House of the Shunned. More Skinwolf and Fimir capacity. Which will be important when we can actually recruit the higher tier the Fimir. Uh, it would actually be nice to get some growth here, but we're fine. Mm, Giant Home Mountains, you, at least for now, are in some of the Chieftains, but uh, we'll swap that out to Builders later. Warwolf Dens will be ready for an upgrade soon. We'll go for the Beast Tanner here, and then Norse Village, and... Oh. Out of these two, it's going to have to be this one, so that we can actually spend some of our damn plunder. Alright, what's up next? Eastern Oblast, we are looking good here. Going to be a little bit until we get to upgrading, but that's fine. The higher these climb, the more growth we get out of each settlement anyway, so... Yeah. We might even temporarily build some growth here, but this would also be a pretty good place to get uh, plunder going. Some plunder buildings going. Certainly potential. And the Warwolf Dens are faction-wide growth, so they'll uh, they'll help fix this situation as well. Uh, the Cursed City, you're frankly not generating enough money, so I think we'll just uncollect the income and let you grow a little bit faster. Anything with just, like, tiny, tiny amounts could just grow on its own. Black Blood Pest still has plenty of Skaven Corruption. Kirk Vlag, definitely go for the Marble Quarry. And then the Beast Tanner. You already have the Warhound Kennels, that becomes the Warwolf Den. You can upgrade so that you can get this up and running next turn as well. Good. Uh, Marches of Kurun, not gonna spend no expenditure for long. Gi, let us do Warband Camp here at Erengrad, however. Kislev. I mean, you know what? Go for the growth build. Oh, wait, actually. If we stay here, we'll probably want to build the Cultist Camp with Furs and the Bloody Bulwark as well. We'll see. All right, Troll Country, you're up next. You will be making us solid amounts of cash eventually, but for now, we just have to actually get you up and running. So, first stash is for you. And I would be tempted to let the... to let the plague... I was going to say Skaven Plague, which is the regular Nurgle Plague, go. But for now, it's not something we can do. I also really want to declare war on the Empire, but... until these armies separate, we can't really do so. Which is coming soon, though, so that's fine. All right, next up, who have we not moved? Surtha. All right, so, ah, Luan is coming. Ooh, 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 wait, the bait thing might work. Uh, Surtha, go here. Let's see if Luan's willing to land. Go into ambush into these trees just away from this guy. I hope it's not too far. And then we'll hope that he goes for Longi while not knowing you're here. I was going to go for Leoness, but we could always come back to it. Hopefully he doesn't go past Longi. It really depends on whether the ambush works out. I suppose after... Uh, ooh, wait, what about these guys? Would it be faster to land like this or like this? Might actually be faster to go this way. Oh, hello. Azubor. Why are you guys sort of moving away from each other? Don't be cowards. Come on now. Unbelievable. Yelled the big one. <laughs> the big one. Ah, uh, you go... Over here, you're supposed to join the Hunter army, and then so are you. And then we have another another one of these Skinwolf Werekin that's ready to go. This one is going to join a Cornate army that we're going to get up and running soon as we can. We're out of capacity for Skinwolves. We do have more... Hmm. We do have more Fimir available. I wonder if that thing that gives us plus five recruitment rank to them will come up. Because if it comes up again, that would be... Well, that would be swell. Anyway... 
Throggy and Morkaka. I think we're going to move you two in. Okay, Morkaka, you're going to go here. I hope we can do this right. Go here. Uh, I'll go here. Then, yes, okay, you're good. Throg, we are going to declare war on these guys by asking the Fekin Knights to join for money again. Join the war against the Ice Court, which... Not quite there. He wouldn't even become our vassal for Erengrad. Well, there's nothing in Erengrad, to be fair. Alright, so fine. And we'll do this for 2,000 gold. Or we could get our minions to do it. Eh, for now, I think we're okay. They'll, they'll, they can still declare war on any faction that we're at war with, so that's fine. Pro's offer. We don't want them interfering so much as we want their units. And they can interfere afterwards. Also, we do have a little bit of cash that's free, so I think it's time to... Ooh, hello, ally missions. Uh, Lewin, yes. I said yes. And Bloody Sword, Lewin again. Alright, then... Hmm, got decent amounts of stuff with the Pestons. Uh, we want the Howling Citadel, Construct Outpost. We want Subtle Torture. Which is the main place? The Twisted Towers? Yeah, go for the Twisted Towers. And then the Tallyman of Pestilence. I forget where their capital is. It is... Uh, the Forest of Decay. Okay, well, okay, I should have... Yeah. <laughs> uh, they're, I, I guess to be fair, they're all kind of named appropriately. Forest of Decay. And there we go. It's a fair bit of cash to lay down, but, uh, well, we'll want their units, so we may as well begin that. Next up, Diplo. What do we have here? Broken Axe wants to be friends. They're fighting everybody in Bretonia and probably will continue liking us. Unfortunately, since they're not able to trade, I'm not sure that they're going to be too useful to us. Scaling and cool, we can ignore for now. Overlords of Jarduk goes. Same goes for you. Vassalization of... Disciples. 85. Shadow Legion... Oh, wow. Servants of the Conclave. Uh... Huh. Do we have to occupy directly? Or if, if we were to vassalize these guys, would they be our... Hmm. Would we be able to unlock that technology or no? I kind of don't want to, you know, use that method to find out, though. It doesn't seem like the uh, the right move. Hmm. Either way, Wolfric, you've got levels, my friend. I believe... Let's see, you have standard die... And we could get Hulks of Death, which would at least buff up your Mammoth, and I feel like we'll probably get at least a few Mammoths in your army. And decent likelihood we'll get a few other things in here as well. We have Fervent Creatures, but we don't have a number of Skin Wolves to make good use of it as yet. I don't really care for Spawn of Chaos, but while this is kind of meh, because it doesn't have the upkeep reduction that normal blue line endings do have... We would still get one point in unnatural healing, which is still useful casualty or punishment rate, which might make it worth it to go through at least this. But I think first we still get Hulks of Death. And just for the mammoths. Can't let our woolly boys get uh, get hurt. Uh, a retinue physician for you, heal up more, and how about you? You have Feral and Honored, which we could use to help the entire army. Or we could keep on going through this stuff. Just that there's nobody to really take advantage of this as yet. And this I don't think we care about, at least not right now. Let's go hard and skin just to make you yourself a little bit tougher. And we'll see about the rest afterwards. Alright, that's good, and you two I guess can probably forego being upgraded. I just wanted to make sure these guys got their upgrades because, uh, who knows. Who knows if somebody will attack us. I doubt it, but why risk it? Alright, the rest of you are looking good. Next up we declare... Oh, we already did that. Uh, oh, damn, wait. Okay, no, I didn't screw it up. I thought for a second Throg wouldn't be able to uh, do what I wanted him to do, but, uh, yeah. Oh, I just realized something. I wanted Morkaka to get the defeat trade of Tsarina Katrin, because, mm, no, whatever. Too late. No, we're doing this one now. And we'll see, maybe we'll give it to Throg, depending on if he can reach Sevastra from here. All right, Pyrrhic victory, apparently. I also gotta give him, you know what, if we give him the Maws of Savagery, we could uh, just have one Skin Wolf unit in his army. A super-powered one with stock, unspottable, wayfarer, speed, etc, etc, etc. Anyway, this should be a nice little fight. Go, Throggy. Get those trolls going.
All right, here we go. Once again, it's throggening time. At least a couple more times before his newly built trolls and get here and increase the numbers of his loyal subjects. Uh, well, we still got the ice trolls to build, but at least the Norse controls have been doing pretty good in his army so far and are racking up that veterancy because of the pretty insane buffs that uh, Throg provides them with that secondary regeneration trait. Uh, even the regular, relatively low armor armored Norse controls are very much a threat. I do, we ha I do wish we had access to the uh, Chaos Troll variant, with or the Armored Chaos Troll variant, Armored Norse controls, uh, but uh, well, I guess uh, it's probably a good thing that we don't in the sense that uh, it keeps things unique. I do, however, think that Throg should buff any kind of troll unit that he gets, even if they're not technically part of the roster. Like if it's a bile troll or a uh, or any kind of or a river troll, whatever troll, it doesn't matter. Throg should still be able to buff them so that he can make better use of the uh, the outpost system. And damn, Throg gets riddled with arrows from the enemy, but uh, we'll move a nice uh, penumbral pendulum through the line of Streltsy. And the enemy charges Throg, but it looks like those units that he was holding back and get ripped apart by that pendulum. The rest of our units are moving in, while four of our Fimir and our units of uh, Ice Wolves are led by the Weirkin. Our, uh, our Weirkin are all on the flanks, ready to hit the enemy once they turn towards our main stack. Over on the left, we'll have our Fimir also charge these Kislevite warriors, but generally speaking most of the enemy are going to be engaged on the left and on the right as soon as we're ready for it. Trolls have made their way forward as well, kicking and sundering their foe's armor with their big old armor piercing hammers. Or is that a, supposed to be an axe with like a stone head on it? Whatever, anyway. Enemy Lord and me Boyark has uh, bravely decided to stand against the Rog, but somehow I don't think that's going to go so well. Uh, Boyar will take a couple more hits and probably begin routing shortly after this. Our Fimir are now heading into the fight as well. And against the basic unit of Kossars with shield and saber, the bleed-causing Fimir Stalkers, even if they are relatively fragile, should have no problem at all. Up here, more Fimir are wading into the fight. And some armored Kossars with great weapons are going to be holding these guys back, and that's a little bit more of a, uh, perhaps, iffy proposition. At least without having both units of Fimir attack the enemy from different directions. And the Ice Wolves have found some of the enemy. Throg has defeated the enemy Lord. One uh, Frost Maiden gets surrounded by one unit of Ice Wolves, and then our Weirkin has found Ulrika, together with the other unit of Ice Wolves. And it looks like she's having a tough time against us. Actually, a fairly uh, decent uh, idea to use these guys to uh, kill off single entities like this. At least non-monstrous single entities. There we go. A nice hunt for our Wirkin, and it looks like the Frostmane will probably go down relatively quickly as well. Just out of curiosity, we've got 67 weapon strength uh, on the... Uh, uh, on the ice holes, which is damn solid. I mean, they do have the buff on them right now, so the like the faction-wide buff, which is not, which is you know temporary, but it is allowing them to do massive amounts of damage to whatever enemies they encounter. Things in the woods. Fallen easily here. Throg lifting his maul over the Akshina ambushers. And by the looks of it, the battle is pretty much ours. There we go. Alright, let's see. And it looks like the entire army is in by our blood now. Everything has collapsed. It's just a matter of time of waiting for a few extra seconds while the last of the enemy units uh, either are destroyed or run out of that 30 second clock. And there we go, by the looks of it, with that, the battle is ours. Lovely. Well done to Throggy. And by the looks of it, we didn't take all that much damage either.
All right, very nice as always. Beautiful work from Tharagi. Got a decent bit of cash, about 5k for our trouble, which since we're negative again, uh, it's, <laughs> it's certainly needed. Uh, this army is destroyed. Ooh, looks like the Fimir actually got more kills than anybody else this time around. Well done, Fimir, especially as it's the uh, just the little uh, stalkers. Lovely. All right, this army is destroyed since it was in March stance. Throggy is unfortunately not able to reach Serena Catrin, which means some Somebody else will have to... Huh, wait, can nobody... Wait. <laughs> nobody can reach this, can they? Oh no. Did I screw this up is the question. Hmm. So if she sallies out, she might be able to chase these guys down. Okay, meaning, unfortunate... Hey, and I sell it. Uh, Dragrult. Who is Dragrult? One of these. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Uh, city and amulet, enemy killed in battle. The ice queen hmm, she might try to sally out and attack Ahead, Olaf, Katarina. but I don't think without mages Olaf is ready for this fight. Alright, so we're gonna put Throg in... Hmm. You're not even really able to switch to any kind of stance? Alright, hi. Go here. Here's a will do. What is you, you to reinforce like, so... Yes. So what this should in theory do, other than Hama Thane Frost, wait. If you attack Hama... Okay, wait, you move here. Now, you're not in range of Throg, but if she attacks Throg, she's going to lose anyway. Well, then again, he is in raiding stance, whereas this army is in no stance at all. Hmm... And he doesn't heal because it's not in camp. I'm just wondering whether we should put more Kaka beside Throg or beside these guys. Because if she attacks Hamathane Frost, we need all the reinforcements we can get. We'll have to deal with her and with the uh, with these guys. Damn, yeah. Definitely screwed that up a little bit. But oh well. And what can you do? Uh, <laughs> not screw up in the future. That's about it. Uh, so the heck, you are fine as you are in the ambush. And I think we're ready to end the turn and see what happens. You're still recruiting, yes? Yes. And you have no additional recruitment spaces. Hmm. If we go into raiding camp, this would give us additional unit XP, but that doesn't really do anything. It would assume give us access to global recruitment, but I don't want to pay any extra money for anything, so that's not, uh, it's not necessary. We've checked this, but I want to check it again, mostly because I clicked on it. And I guess we're good. Wait, 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 wait. Did we build the buildings that we needed to build here? Yes. Looks like we end the turn then. Wait. Wolfric? Eh, damn. <laughs> Still too damaged for that, uh, uh, for that monster hunt. Unassigned skill points, building upgrades available. You know, I guess if Throggy gets a tag, just in case, we should probably assign his points. One more point into sacking settlements, and then start buffing up those trolls, I imagine. Probably the way to go. He does take a lot of missile damage as well. Hmm. What is a troll buff again? I think it's, yeah, it's melee attack primarily, which doesn't really do too much for them. This I already attack fairly high numbers. Uh, yeah, let's do that, then get Femir Capacity and into our natural healing, and everything else will be fine. And Drogrult, Red New Valet, please, more magic items. We should also get you some, you know, fighty skills, but that'll, it'll, it'll come in time. Uh, Twisted Flesh, so that should go. Uh, Ruinous Flesh as well. There we go. Let's see who Tsarina Katrin attempts to go for, or whether she attempts to escape to, like, Batavo or something. She could try to retake Kislev as well, couldn't she? I'm not sure that she's in range of it or not, but even if she is, we'll just, yeah. Alright, she will attack and she will attack Hama Thane for us, so it was the right move to move more Kaka into this side. We will have to be a little bit careful with this. And... Hama's in March stance, but the rest of you aren't. We have no mages to rely upon. We do have the reinforcements, however, but we do have to wait until they arrive on the field. Should be an interesting one. Go.
Alrighty, here we go. This should be an interesting one. We stand against Serena Katrin, the Golden Knight, and Godric, and Felix, as well as four regiments of renown, not counting the rest of their units. Plus, on top of that, this is our new untested Pathfinder and Marauder Hunter army. I'm uh, I'm excited to see what we can do and if we can uh, if we can manage to win this. I don't know how well the uh, Marauder Hunters will perform here, but I'm excited to see. Especially the uh, Marauder Hunters with the axes, as we haven't been uh, using them thus far. The at least uh, the bonus range on the Marauder Hunters with javelins should work nicely here. It doesn't give them as much range as a uh, uh, as an actual unit of archers would have, but, uh, well, still hopefully enough. Just to compare, we've got... Huh, it actually gives them more range than the Akshina Ambushers, but, well, that's not surprising that that makes sense. Anyway, we're gonna start the battle off with the Penumbral Pendulum, moving through two of the enemy regiments over now. Those Watchmen in the Night Tower are a devastatingly strong unit, especially with that dampen application, when combined with Serena Katrin, and we want as few of them uh, available to hit our Marauder Hunters with their 16 melee defense in melee as possible. But anyway, the Armored Cossars have a 90 range, but the Unarmored Archer ones have 140, so obviously they do outrange the Marauder Hunters javelins but uh, let's say not by much anyway it looks like the enemy will head towards us and it's time to let those marauder hunters axes fly those are actually pretty big old axes damn and they'll get hit with a few arrows, but the axes will fly let's see how many of the enemies survive the axe storm to get towards us and the javelin storm of course Looks like at least a few of the Watchmen in the night will close the distance. Oh, wow, that one got hit by <laughs> way too many javelins. And most of these guys uh, did, in fact, get wiped out. Gotrek, Felix, and the Golden Knight all charge forth here together. Oh, actually, together with uh, another Boyar as well. And we're going to, by and large, have to ignore them, as there's not really anything we can do about them. Over on the right flank, we have our units of Marauder Horses, who are closing in and attacking the Boydenov's Brawler's Streltsy. And these are the Streltsy that have the uh, uh, that have the blunderbusses and could thus be devastating to our infantry lines, and hopefully our units surround them and destroy them without too much trouble. We do, however, have a snow cat in here somewhere, a snow leopard, who will probably bring down a fair few number of those horses. Out here, Serena Catrin has used her uh, ice, I forgot to remember the name of the ability, uh, explosion ability on our horses that charge the Cossars, and has taken off about a quarter, well not a quarter, but 40% of their HP. Some of our Marauder Hunters with Javelins are also... Well, Marauder Hunters with Axes are taking damage. But the Axes still fly and so do the Pendulums. Alright, very nice. Range exchange will continue until morale improves, and by improves I mean the enemy's morale is all gone. Marauder hunters with javelins trying to focus down those Xena ambushers, axes smashing into those armored cossars and doing quite well at it due to all the armor piercing damage and the shield breaker as well. And not too bad. Over on the leftmost flank, we get a little bit of new Fimir unit action as the Mist Stalkers, our first unit of proper Fimir warriors, have made their way into the fray. They're twice the size of the little tiny and adorable Fimir Stalkers. And they got big old bonkin' dual handers as well. Alright, and they should be quite adept at destroying the enemy uh, the enemy armored cossars, armor sundering and armor piercing magical damage as they are. And with a little bit of help of that bleed application from the regular Fimir Stalkers. Alright, otherwise the battle is still about 50-50. Once again, it was always bound to be a dangerous one. The range exchange continues, and in retrospect, it might have actually been a good idea to move our Marauder Hunters with throwing axes specifically into melee to fight the enemy range units, because I'm willing to bet that the Marauder Hunters would be able to outfight the Cossars. Maybe. Actually, the Cossars, regular Cossars stats are fairly decent. 40 and 44. Their melee defense is way, way higher. Which is kind of interesting. These guys have higher melee defense with a single axe than the Marauder Hunters with throwing axes do with two axes. 
How do you explain that? <laughs> well, I guess these guys do have a little bit more armor, but that's probably represented... Actually, no, they have less armor than the Marauder Hunter. <laughs> well, let's just say their uh, their looks uh, maybe... Uh, don't tell the whole story. Just like real luck. Anyway, uh, looks like we are pretty much done with the enemy back line here. The bounce power has only shifted to about, let's say, 65% in our favor. We're still having very much... Dead difficult time dealing with the Golden Knight at all, who's by and large ignoring our range damage and still able, able and still being able to dish out massive blows. And of course, Gautrek, Felix, and Serena Katrin are still fighting as well. Gotta be careful of those javelins as they are a danger to our own forces. Maybe we can uh, maybe we can focus down at least one of the enemy units, and it does look like Felix will be the first to go. We have been spamming Melkoth's Mystifying Miasma on him, just because it's the only real thing we have. Uh, the other option would have been to essentially just uh, allow our, our units to move away and then arrange them down. And by them, I mean the enemy heroes. Anyway, Felix is uh, just about done for, shattered, and uh, running. Gautrek probably wouldn't appreciate seeing him running, and it looks like the Golden Knight and Serena Katrin will shatter. Of course, uh, Gautrek himself will fight to the last, but uh, looks like we do manage to pull this one off. It was a close call, however. We clearly took quite a bit of damage. Definitely, well, we need to actually level up the Pathfinder as these guys are not buffed. They need veterancy, and they need their buffs. And we also need to bring Gautrek down. He's managed to kill 124 Marauders. He's slowly been losing HP. We've been chipping away at him. And the rest of this battle is just going to be this. Maybe if we can land a few... Oh, he lurches forward just as the javelins come down. And there we go, that's a proper set of javelins causing Gotrick to activate his healing ability, but now since this unit is running, he has to run forward to rush the other units. In fact, we're actually going to activate Melkoth's Mystifying Miasma to slow him down and allow the other javelins to bring him down instead. Perhaps insulting to bring down a warrior of uh, Gotrick's caliber uh, via range javelin throws. But you gotta do what you gotta do. He's already got plenty of marauders to his name and had to be brought down in whatever manner we could manage. A Pyrrhic victory and, uh, well, not surprising, but I think well earned and I'm excited to see what more this army can do. All right, there we go, a nice fight, and ooh, by the looks of it, the Marauder Hunters with throwing axes did plenty of damage, or at the very least got plenty of kills, which is nice. They also, however, took a ton of damage as they are not supposed to act as frontliners, and in this particular army, we're forcing them to be such. Um, we got a free Shrieking Blade, and we're going to sacrifice the captives, and where will Serena Katrin go? Over here. I want to see what her defeat trait is, as in what the SFO version of her defeat trait is. In a few seconds, Grimgor, Broken Axe, uh, you guys are still sticking around, so one of you can just take Savastro, shouldn't be, uh, shouldn't be too much trouble. I keep thinking everybody's gonna constantly summon or suffer attrition. Anyway, you want us to trade, I'd love to, but not until you're dead. Uh, <laughs> Thelman Ingerson, same with you, buddy. Uh, you've got territory that we want to the south of Norsk. Alright, so, uh, Frostbite Attack is no longer there, Terror against Kislev is useless, Casualties suffered from all attrition faction-wide, and ooh, Campaign Movement Range bonus. That is actually useful. Uh, we don't want the Shrieking Blade. And the spell shield, you don't need that, we'll put that on the mage. Wolf Claw Banner, Terror, Fear, and Armor Piercing Weapon Damage. Very nice. Now I'm gonna give it to Morkaka, but uh, we'll certainly find it for somebody. Ruskin Warhorse, regular Warhorse, and Fort Stragov as a plague. We're gonna need to deplagueify this place, aren't we? Not much of a choice in the matter. Anyway, uh, I'm not going to end this episode, but I am going to make a quick cut here as I need to close the game. I was dropping frames like every second in that particular battle, and I'm 100% sure that the game will crash at any moment. So, be right back. 
All right, there we go. Sorry about that. And now we have Katrin in range at Vitevo, which means we could probably occupy this with somebody else. Now, it would probably be safer to use one of these guys to occupy it, as in one of the ones that... Well, we should still keep a full stack here, just in case Vlad attacks or something else. Uh, not super likely, I will admit, but, you know, why risk it, right? Uh, so we'll use Olaf here to occupy. And, oh, whoa, 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 the sack value is how much? Well, I guess if we're trading this to... Uh, huh. Actually, it would go down to tier 1 anyway, so there's no real reason not to sack it. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, break the siege. I'm pretty sure Throg can sack for more money than uh, this guy can. He can sack for... <laughs> Wait, what's the difference? It's a matter of only about 3, 4, 6, 6. That's kind of surprising, considering Throg has sacking settlements plus a bunch of things that should, in theory, increase the uh, sack value. Huh. Well, nonetheless, you gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, sacks of Austria. Like so. Let's double check that nobody will die. Doesn't look like it, unless the auto resolve is lying, which is a distinct possibility. Uh, no, we're good. Alright, so you're gonna sack this. Then. Uh, Ring of Ruby, Ring of Ruin, I don't care for it. We can delete it. Ward save out of the Talisman of Endurance. Nice, but we'll probably go on probably Sirtha Ek at first, at least until this army is ready to go fully. Enchanted Shield and Potion of Foolhardiness need to be turned into better items. Throg, you're gonna hit Vitevo next. And we'll move another Lord in to reinforce. All right, do this in a second. Can you want to resolve this? You can, but I would like more Kaka to be here as well. Frankly, we should be able to get Serena Katrin's defeat rate on everybody around. Simply because... I mean, how much territory? We saw 10 settlements. All right, and oh, uh, we're actually running out of time. Uh, <laughs> maybe I should have ended it instead of a game. Well, whatever. Whatever, we're going now. Uh, Olaf takes Avastra and occupy it. Out of curiosity, we have the sparring fields here. How much is Avastra worth to you? All right, it's worth 37. Not too bad. If we join war against the Empire, we are only 6,000 gold away from your vassalization. Uh, and we could also wait the four turns necessary to upgrade this and probably just be able to do it thereafter. Hmm. I don't care for holding the mountainous territories. I hmm, Actually, I wonder what gold does for us. We don't have anything with gold, do we? I'm a little bit curious to see what it does for us faction-wide. We do have iron, which is up here. Uh, how important is iron? Not important at all. Okay. A few things. I think furs are important because they buff the faction-wide berserkers. And... Okay, you're also going to get the bloody bulwark. Hold on to Kislev. And raise the palisades is probably no longer needed here. We can switch you to marauders to builders in favor of growth. There's probably a few other things that are important. Uh, not gems. Bonus versus large for marauder hunters, spears, and marauder cab. That's not horrible. Uh, the animals cultist camp. Marble, I think, is not faction wide. It's just in the region of the province. I think pottery is something good. Is it pottery? Defensive supplies plus 200, all regions faction-wide. That can actually be quite helpful, in theory. And, huh. Enslave the southerners. Well, this is quite interesting. So, Lewin did fall for the ambush, but also not. Uh, huh. And now I don't know whether he'd actually be able to reach Kurun by non-march dance or not. This is kind of interesting. We should probably kill off Florence here, but maybe go back into ambush, but we'll deal with that in a second. Oh, you know what? Before fighting anything else, we should take a quick look at buildings. And not Erengrad. There was somewhere... Aha, Warwolf Den. There we go. Now that our plunder is not uh, immediately maxed out. Morkaka, you can move into reinforce, I think, in regular stance as well. You won't be able to reach the place either, but if we stop Throg from moving, we should be able to sack it and take it as well. And keep the money flowing. Like so. Auto-resolve, nobody will die. 
And these two have to stay near each other because Throg's going to give Morkaka like half his army later, so yeah. Uh, decent bit of reward money, decent bit of plunder as well. Then we sack and some of some of the... All right, there we go. Defeated Serena Catron on you now. And Ransacker as well. Nice. Channeling Staff and Scroll of Leeching, neither one we care about. A slave worker construction cost for all buildings could come in handy, however. Though perhaps not here. Uh, we have now two Scrolls of Leeching, neither one of which I do think I ever use. So we're going to fuse them and let's hope we get a Armor of Destiny. Nope. 10 Physical Resistance, 15 Armor, Bloodstained Armor of Morkar. Wow. For naming this the Armor of Morkar, this is kind of terrible. This should be a green item. I think this might actually be worse than the uh, uh, than the Armor of Fortune, which I don't think we have any in this campaign. All right, well, we are getting a decent number of uncommon items, or wait, common items, the, the basic ones, of this particular episode, which is good because we should be able to make good use of their... Uh, hmm. Should we raid with you? Will that do anything for us? I'm not sure it will. Uh, just stay here for now. Anyway, let's repair this. 434, worth much less than uh, we spent, which is great. You guys are supposed to go to this army so that it can act on its own, but it's nearly there anyway. Both of you mages. And we should probably get a Fimir down there. Lamanda, you have one more turn to recruit two more feral manticores, and then you gotta get these trolls to Throg, unless... There's some place that will get us more troll capacity, though. I'm not entirely sure about that. Can we build Fimir here? No, can we build him here? No. Yeah, what's the nearest place where we can build Fimir? I fear that they're all super far. Wait, wait, is it here? No, damn. The casualty replenishment rate in all of Fimirkin's army is kind of awful just just awful so without a Fimir he is not gonna have a good time meaning we need to get him one now he already has two mages so this will be the third mage which feels like it's a little bit much as for which type we went for metal and shadow was it no we went for metal and death and we could do fire I think fire is probably the better pick here why fire? Because fire gives us uh, not... Well, Cascading Fire Cloak, potentially, but also the uh, Sword of Ruin, which would increase range damage on the entire blob of range units, which would work. Character or leadership effect? Yeah, you know what? We're going to need that for the Marauder Hunters. I wish you weren't so costly, but... Yeah. <laughs> We're going negative again. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, we get getting used to it. You know what? Let's do a little building building because I feel like we need to use more plunder up as well. Mountains of Hell. Oh, well, we don't really need to do anything here. Giant Home Mountains. We can upgrade, start with Syok Traken because we can upgrade the port and get a offering of slaughter there. Oh, we didn't have the reduction because we, uh... Well, we didn't have the reduction. All right, fine. Uh... How much is this? To 190. Honestly, probably not worth the turn. Still go to Marauder. Oh, actually, Marauders to Builders reduces construction time by one, meaning we can actually save this and do it next turn without any trouble. Troll High Mountains, you're fine and you're in the appropriate stance. Or Madney Mountains, you are building that Warwolf Den. And you can build the. I guess first dash here. Are you able to collect income now? Plus three. It's not much income. But I think we're okay. The growth isn't such a problem that you... Well, I mean, we could spend a few more turns growing you faster. Yeah, you know what? Maybe I think that's the uh, that's the better option here. Anyway, Marches of Kuhan. We'll upgrade Kuhan. And we will... Maybe we could upgrade the port. It's not expensive. Just do it. More bait for the enemy. And Erengrad will upgrade the port. I would like to do the pottery, but I fear that we have to do the bloody bulwark as uh, we're essentially going to use Kislev, Prague, and uh, uh, and Erengrad as a sort of fortified area. Everything south of it will be ruins as we need gifts from the gods. The rest of this looks fine to me. Troll country, let's go for beast tamer, trainer, whatever. Uh, upgrade these things and... What? I guess we could do... Oh, we can't do the troll building as yet. We could do another mage building with the control bonus that it confers. Technically, we need these ever... Oh, and it would allow us to eventually build Fimir Balefiends closer. Yeah, you know what? Let's do that. I don't want to keep them, you know, running all the way to the front. It takes a while. Skull Lakes. Now, 
Okay, this does nothing for us faction-wide. Good, just had to check. Let's build a military structure here, and then we'll do the same at Fort Dorjny Vort, and then they will be worth more once we trade them to these guys, hopefully, for vassalage. Just out of curiosity, currently, Great Skull Lakes is nowhere near vassalization, and Dorjny Vort is basically worthless. But we're working on it, game. We're working on it. Just you wait. Wolfric, you're able to reach Saber Mountain? Oh, that's fantastic. You won't be able to raise it, though. And I think nobody else can move nearly as far as you can. Meaning we'll have to sack it and then waste the turn, but probably worth our time. What do we have at Saber Mountain? Well, we don't have any defenders. Everybody will like this action, because everybody around Grimgore hates him, and I think, uh, I think he's also one of the stronger factions in the... Oh! Wow, look at that. Kim wants us to actually fight this. They do have a garrison ditch, though, meaning we'd have to fight this manually, and I fear we don't have to do... We, we don't have that time to do that in this particular episode. Nonetheless, if we do it like that, we will still move both of you over here and leech the XP. And getting ready to separate the Marauder Berserkers and uh, start up a Cornate army. So Wolfric army will separate into a Cornet, Cornate army, and then obviously Throg's army will separate into his Troll army and a Fimir army, fast as we can. We also need more Dirox for the Fimir army, at least one more, but I'll keep an eye on it. Sirtha, quickly kill off Florence here, who's foolishly in March stance. And auto-resolve. And don't tell me you survived. Okay, no, 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 March stance. I'm just <laughs> hey, we got a Forbidden Rod just out of that. Fantastic. Well done, Surfa. You do good work, my friend. Now, we can go back into Ambush Stance, but we won't be in range of Kuran. Oh, man. Do we risk this guy actually being able to reach Kuran? I don't know. I hope he can't. I really hope he can't. Go back into ambush. I'm gonna hope that he can only land, like, right here and can't actually besiege it. As otherwise, we're only two turns away from completing this. I mean, in theory, even if we fail, we could just go, still go back and redo it. Also, you two can now land. Get ready to join Sirtha's army. He can't go around and grab Long Gi. And I see Leoness actually got sacked by something, presumably by the Broken Axe. Alright. That looks okay. Stigazling, who are you again? Oh, right, you're one of the, uh... You're one of the leeches. Not that that's a bad thing, mind you. Just keep on leeching, my friend. Head on over to here. Get ready to move towards Wolfric. And... Let's see. On a Thane Frost, we are maxed out. We're nearing, be, nearing to be maxed out with plunder yet again, aren't we? Huh. I'd like to end the turn, but to end the turn we have to fight again, so I guess we're fighting this. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't expecting to. This is why uh, <laughs> this is why lately every single campaign has been going long. I just can't help myself. Uh, anyway, uh, we're trying to get revered by the tribe. Really, it was pillager, the pillager that we wanted, but uh, yeah. When's the magic power reserve capacity plus eight, eh? That's not bad. Leadership versus income when raiding. I'm gonna say this for now, and then Tradition of the Victim- no, uh, Revered by the Tribe, and then we'll go back into getting our, uh, our other buffs. You two can hold off, I don't think there's anything critical for you. You have a natural healing, should probably go for Fueled by War, though, and possibly Infamous Raider as well. But for now, Clown Mother is key, because uh, you're going to have a female mainline. What about you? You can get on natural healing. Since we don't know exactly what the drunken brawler guy will do, and which god he will devote himself to. Hound works, but I'm not so sure that the giants will work so well with... Uh... With berserkers. I think the berserkers need an infantry buff to give them additional missile resistance, so... Not much of a choice in the matter. Anyway, uh, you... Oh, right, we're gonna have to manually fight this. Alright, rush those walls, fight battle. No choice in the matter. I really miss that, miss that uh, Shatter Stone ability that... Oh! It's a field battle. Oh, I guess we can make this cinematic. Lovely. Cinematic it is. Blood! 
Alrighty, here we go. Ogre territories means no walls, just like Norskan territories. Uh, looks like the AI has to contend with this issue, and just as we have to live with it ourselves. Also, this map. This is a, pre it's a pretty good map to have our units defend on. This is a rather nice sort of position as we've got, uh, it's almost like a fort within the center of the map. It's got a lot of impassable terrain around it. And the unfortunate aspect of this is it is within a depression in the uh, uh, in the land, so the enemy will have elevation advantage, but nonetheless, we can make it work for us. Besides, uh, this uh, this also reminds me of the Serena Catron campaign. We had a very, very nice, a massive battle on this particular map there on the defensive as well as uh, uh, as Kislev. I don't remember if it was against the orcs, but I do remember that it was very, very fun. It was probably against the orcs, but anyway. Anyway, here we go. Looks like the enemy will be annoyed enough to move towards us. Gehenna's Golden Hounds will follow up that uh, Sea Fang as it usually does. Very picturesque lighting in the background. Here comes some Searing Doom to follow up that Gehenna Zan, this time actually clipping a decent amount of the enemy units. And just seeking to annoy them enough to uh, move towards this uh, choke point here. And ooh, hello, Spider Riders. And we'll decide to charge on forth. We do have to be careful with the javelins. Oh, so many of them hit our own units. Guys, come on. <laughs> Oh, your accuracy really leaves them to be desired. And in fact, at this point, I decide to turn off the auto fire on the javelins and instead move Wolfric in to uh, make these uh, uh, make these spider riders go away. Perhaps the boars are a better target, however, as we turn fire back on and target the boars specifically. Especially while they remain relatively up the hill, unlike the spider riders who are already engaged with our marauder champions. All right, down they go and into the javelin storm, but we've met many a boar boy before with the javelins, and they uh, rarely, if ever, manage to weather that storm. Uh, over on the rightmost flank, looks like a pile of works managed to try to uh, flank us. Well, on the flank. Uh, <laughs> we do get a burning head through them and send the marauders with great axes uh, to begin the fight. The marauders are there mostly to just pin them in place while they uh, wait for the marauder berserker to come in and actually do the damage. That said, it's a pretty big old pile of units and ripe for a little bit of spell work shortly. Another unit of boar boys comes on down, but once again our javelineers were waiting for this and are gonna hit them very, very hard, forcing them to rout immediately. Manny will join Wolfric as well as the Icehorn Marauders in making their way up the hill. The enemy had that uh, elevation advantage, uh, but not for very long. Besides, a hill doesn't seem that big when the mammoth can see the top of the hill from the bottom of it. Alrighty, and time to get a Gehenna's Golden Hound to that big old blob of enemy units. Hoping it does not move too closely towards us, though it does seem to be moving towards our line of marauders, who are moving towards the enemy as the enemy runs. Now, this is going to hurt us a little bit. And I see Marauders dropping. We're going to try to back off lest we take too much damage to that. It does look like it did send many a foe routing, um, but certainly a fair few of our own as well. Uh, our reinforcements, such, well, reinforcements, our flankers have made their way as, in as well. The Beasts of Tashinar, our Werekin, and our Skin Wolves. But there really isn't much for them to work with on the enemy flank. On the other, on the rightmost flank, same thing is happening, except it's our Marauder horsemen who are chasing in. They were waiting for the the enemy melee line to be engaged so that they could simply chase down the enemy range. But the enemy range really aren't up to it either, and with that, it looks like the enemy army will shatter and the battle will be ours. All right, and so falls Grimgore's capital. First we brought down uh, the orc himself, and then we took down his capital. I don't know how long we intend to keep on bullying him, at least with this army. Oh, but it certainly showed him who's, uh, who's boss for now.
All right, there we go. 126 losses, most of them to being clipped by one of our own Gehenna's Golden Hounds, and then the rest mostly to being clipped by our own Marauder Hunters with Javins. As we can see, the enemy got, what, 19, 25, 32, 33 kills total. So, yeah, we did more than twice as much damage to our to ourselves, but oh well. All in the name of also dishing out massive amounts of damage. Wolfric still getting massive kills. The Mammoth really does bump up his killing potential, uh, even if we discount Sea Fang. But anyway, that puts the plunder back up to max. Uh, we are going to... Do we raise this place or do we sack it? Well, actually, next turn we'll actually be able to raise it for one of these guys. So, yes, yeah, sack it now. And then... Mm. I wanted to see if we could move far enough away, but it's all right. Uh, we'll go into raiding stance, we'll sit here for a turn, then we'll raise it, probably with one of these guys next turn. I guess we'll have to ask ourselves how we want to move. What do you guys think? I mean, I'm still thinking because Jarna Grund is one of our objectives, and we should probably go down to it. The thing is, we don't necessarily have to do so right now, if we don't want to. Uh, we could go elsewhere. We could just keep moving up this way, raising our way through to Kolek, Tamarkan, and Archeon, which would be the uh, great defeats that we would like. Why are you hanging around our friends here? Hmm? Hmm? I don't appreciate it. Anyway, folks, I believe I was about to say we were out of time, but I would like to end the turn still to see if anything interesting happens. And also so that the admin is ready to go for next turn. Hama, just, just, just stay there. Just stay near Olaf. And we've already... Why didn't I do anything about this? I get distracted by something we sacked it. Oh, I was trying to decide whether we need to occupy it or whether we want to raise it next turn. Hmm. You don't necessarily want to keep it. Because there's just no sense in bothering to fortify all this stuff. And, well, we wouldn't be able to raise it this turn anyway. So we could go back into... Oh, we could go into raiding camp, heal up, raise it with Morkaka next turn. Hmm. There's potential for it. Once again, how much is Avastra worth to you? The only thing I'm concerned about is without another territory to be given to these guys, we won't be able to... Uh, we won't be able to vassalize them. And we need more vassals, especially ones to hold the territory southward. If we take Vitevo, we might be able to... Well, but I guess I guess we could also do that here at Fort Chikova and Nigarov, so we could still raise this in theory. Hmm. On the other hand, we could also just occupy it since we're very well in range and then trade it to those guys. Yeah, fine, let's occupy it, whatever. It'll just be safer, so it'll allow us to build another uh, military structure and uh, have this thing hopefully be worth a little bit more cash. Anyway, now we're able to end the turn and see if anything interesting happens. Most importantly, I want to see if Kurun gets retaken or not. Alright, obviously Kislev isn't too happy about this. I'm actually very impressed that the f about the fact that they took all of the Bone Rattlers' territories. I think what was happening is essentially the Bone Rattlers were pushing southward to destroy Karakadrin and ignoring their northward territories, which uh, Kislev just snapped up for free, so... And good for Kislev. Honestly, this... It's kind of weird, but this really reminds me of the uh, Boris Ursus campaign back in the day, because there was a whole thing about holding these mountain territories on that map. Man, it was a different time. Anyway, uh, Lewin has landed in March Stance, ready for Sirtha to kill him off. Uh, honestly, even if it is Lewin, it's probably not worth fighting, and his faction is hardly going to be destroyed here. He still has two territories out here. I'm just thinking that this is a waste of time once again, even if it is Luan, because what would happen is we'd just kill off the rest of his pathetic little army and then we'd uh, move on. I think we just ought to resolve him. Unless it says, like, this is a bad idea. Uh, close victory, medium casualties, eh? Hmm. Yeah, we can fight it. I guess we could put these guys in the army and have them at least leech a little bit of... Oh, wait. And leech a little bit of XP. Maybe there's potential for that. Alright, we'll save it for next time then. And minus 3,018. That's not so good. That's not so good. It's mostly because of these guys. Um, but uh, yeah, it'll be a few turns until we get them where they need to go. We just need to keep sacking so that uh, our money uh, our money remains in, a good, in good stead. We also should really deplagify all this territory before it spreads all over the place. 
Ugh. All right. Anyway, anyway, more Wolfric to come. So stay tuned. Don't forget to leave those likes and comments below, especially the threshold if you're into longer episodes a daily. All glory to the algorithm. And let me know your thoughts about all this, where we go. And thanks for watching.